It aims to make students want to learn math and science. Our children have the ability and the energy to be the best in the world. The challenge we face is how to best harness that ability and that energy so our young people will want to succeed. U.S. First really wants to do for science and technology what the NBA or the NCAA or the Olympic Committee does for athletics. This country is still doing very well in football and basketball and at the Olympics in the world competitive marketplace. Unfortunately, none of those things really have much effect on our quality of life or our standard of living. The goal of U.S. First is to create a little bit of demand among kids particularly for excellence in science and technology the same way that uh, they have such an unbelievable demand for excellence in various kinds of sports. The teacher walks in and he says, guys, we got this neat robot project, you know, he says, uh, it's just so awesome. And he starts telling us about it and, we're, and it just like it fell right into our He's pulling these pieces out of a box. We got to build it out of all this stuff and we're going, yeah, this is cool. U.S. First makes learning fun because like, I mean, we get to, we get hands-on experience with everything. You're actually doing something. You're not just in a classroom looking at a book, just, you know, studying every night. This is more of a hands-on type thing and, you know, I, I like the fact that we're working with engineers. Well, I think what I gained from this is how to work with a team and just how to communicate with other people your ideas. Because you have ideas also, but you also have to respect other people's ideas. The thing that kids are reacting to with so well is the way they feed off of each other and they realize, you know, it's cool to think now. It's the 90s, man. It's a very cool thing to appreciate people who can think and who are smart and intelligent. And I don't mean gifted. I mean people that are willing to sit down and say, you know, I don't know the answer to this. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to stay here long enough to figure it out. Unless we all work together to get our science and engineering education situation in the United States at a higher level, uh, everybody loses. And so um, companies have many roles that they can play, and this is one where they get a lot of visibility themselves, uh, but they also get to work on, on telling students how teamwork is really, really important in the real world. Kids get an idea of what engineering is really like, and maybe some of these kids will end up in their companies. Obviously one of our concerns is, is that over the years we see trends in our youngsters becoming less and less interested in science and technology. That doesn't bode well for the future. We're in a very competitive world and so our interest is very, very simple. We want the youngsters of today who have the talent to enter science and technology to do so. And the only way that you win today is in short bursts with uh, real technology. Uh, you can't win today relying on yesterday's technology and so you really have to get your product smarter and smarter. Companies have to use more and more knowledge and so that's one of the real key things about a, a program like U.S. First is that it really getting and working with the kids when they're young, getting them into technology, getting them into the knowledge area. This kind of education is an enabling process. People get involved in something and find out that they're capable of doing things that they didn't realize they could do. It's a hook these kids will leave here really wanting to learn more about math and science so they can do more. Many of them have never been exposed to the process of getting satisfaction out of math and science. This does it. We think that uh, the reason kids can excel in sports these days and are turned off by math and science is they see adult athletes. They see them having a good time, making a lot of money. They see them as role models. Where does a kid ever see a role model, scientist or engineer? So we said let's Let's steal from the playbooks of sports the style of a competition uh, that, is, that is a made-for-television sport. It's got to be an hour or two long. It's got to have instant winners and losers. It has to, in every way, uh, have the trappings and the excitement of a competitive sport. We would construct the uh, competition so that the kids have to be crucial to the process. They have to drive the machines, and in many cases, the kids supply all the really creative and innovative ideas, the solutions, and then the engineers apply uh, their expertise and their knowledge base to turn those creative ideas into real machines. But it shows the kids the value of knowledge when coupled with the value of imagination. It worked the first year with a simple kid on a small field. The, we had about 20 some odd teams and about a 25 pound kit and the second year we had 30 
some odd teams in about a 45 or 50 pound kit. Last year we had over 40 teams with a 60 pound kit. Now we have about 60 teams with a 70 pound kit. And of course this year, uh, being at Epcot, uh, I think is a, is a measure of just how powerful this concept is, both to the students and to the companies. There's a lot of ways the companies get things out of it. First of all, as you can see, we're starting to have a presence that has a reasonable uh, audience. We've been covered by major television stations and, and media around the country and a lot of print media. When companies are looking for ways to work with their community, I think this program is an excellent opportunity for companies to get involved in their community, to build a relationship with the education systems, and really see students get excited about not only competing, but the value of education. I think one of the best benefits our company gets is uh, improved community relations. We're not that big corporation behind the barbed wire fence anymore. You know, we're faces with the students, uh, we get to meet their parents, you know, the parents get to meet the engineers, and I think it gets a good positive relationship. They better understand what we do individually and what we do as a company, and you know, we're just not that looming corporate giant um, in their backyard anymore. I think more than that, they get a lot of internal things out of it. The chairman of the board of Xerox has pointed out at more than one occasion when he's described this as being a great benchmark in, internal to his company. How do you benchmark your ability to design, to develop, to prototype, to put into production a product? Well, you send your engineers to the U.S. first competition, they get a package full of stuff and a design problem statement. From that statement and that pile of stuff, they have six weeks, not, not 13 months, they have six weeks to design, develop, debug, prototype, build, and ship a working solution to a problem. It's been great for me because here I've given an opportunity to lead 30 engineers and 17 students through a, essentially a product development cycle. We have six and a half weeks to create a product. We brainstorm strategies, come up with a basic design, go to the CAD terminals, make a design, um, then go prototype it, see, see exactly where we are, go through testing process, finally the manufacturing stage and the debugging and we're essentially launching our product here in six and a half weeks. Some, some of these engineers have been out of school for a while. They might have forgotten why they became an engineer. They, they need to be recharged. They need to, to feel like they're doing something that's fun. They need to get in the limelight where these kids can say, wow, this is pretty neat, and these guys have some pretty neat skills. The reality is people who work in business really are heroes. It really, business, people who have good jobs and good companies like a Textron, um, that's as good as it gets for, for most people. And so these kids understand that. They are really, you, you get them together and they, they really understand that. And that's a wonderful thing and it's, it's, it makes you really proud. It made the engineers really proud. They, they began to realize again, hey, I am pretty terrific. I've seen several examples of uh, total turnarounds in the direction that a couple of our kids were making. Uh, you know, they were headed in one direction, didn't look like they were really going to do much, and this project completely turned them around 180 degrees. They're excited about going to school, they're excited about maybe going to college. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I've ha I'd have that big an impact on, on a kid's life, you know, so it's, it's pretty neat. So we needed to find a way to make an award that is more prestigious and more important in the eyes of all of our supporters and competitors, and that we call the Chairman's Award. That award is given to the company each year that demonstrates the best partnership between the school and the sponsoring company in promoting the goals of U.S. First. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1995 Chairman's Award is presented